Okay, with the backdrop of beautiful British Columbia, I want to talk about politics because, man, I say we have to be engaged. People cannot ignore it because you ignore politics, you ignore what's going on in the world, and we're getting screwed. We're getting screwed big time. Recently in Alberta, a couple of weeks ago, a budget was announced, and it's a nasty budget. A couple of years ago, 2012 Summer Olympics, Alison Redford was getting into trouble because the Alberta Conservative government spent half a million dollars to take a 29-person party to London for the Summer Olympics, a delegation. And she was getting heat over that because not only did they spend more than half a million dollars, they spent $114,000 for hotel rooms that were booked but never used. Now, imagine you doing that. Imagine, you know, booking hotel rooms and not using them, not getting a refund or anything like that. Premier Redford defended the expenses, saying the trip allowed the government to discuss important qualities of Alberta with the world. Well, whoopty friggin' do. Look where it's gotten Alberta now. Tourism minister staunchly defends the cost. Olympics were a golden opportunity for our province, the opportunity to promote investment and tell other people you know, whatever. I mean, it goes on and on. All this stuff. Everyone's defending it. It's like 2010 in Vancouver and Whistler, British Columbia about the Winter Olympics. Defend it till the death because the world's coming to British Columbia. We're going to be rolling in the dough afterwards. Everything is so friggin' awesome. The What's really not awesome is how politicians do not understand money they do not understand where it comes from from the hard work the sweat and toil of people out there taxpayers it doesn't come from corporations because even with the latest budget alberta is not taxing corporations but it's not just alberta Recently in British Columbia, I sent an email to our Premier, Christy Clark's office, asking questions about what is being spent on travel and tourism in British Columbia. And Destination British Columbia has an annual operating budget of approximately $51 million provided by the government of BC. Well, the government of BC doesn't provide the $51 million bucks. Get that straight. It's the taxpayers paying taxes. It's the guys logging, fishing, working in stores. It's the women doing whatever. You know, it's us taxpayers that provide the $51 million that the government then allocates. It should never be that the government spends. They allocate money they take in. And then they have the audacity to defend their waste in government. Like nobody else can do the things. And the reason I wrote to the BC government, and this isn't sour grapes, but I was really curious about an advertising campaign that was coming up in social media, YouTube, and uh, to do with British Columbia, creating videos promoting British Columbia. Because British Columbia, like every other province, every other municipality, corporation, everyone is in social media because that's where people are going and that they tell you costs money how much money does it cost well get a load of this the total brand development budget including consumer research costs brand strategy creative development brand guidelines for industry image and video production production rights and assets is 2.6 million dollars this includes the wild within videos 30 second, 60 second, and 180 second, which is a three minute version. Three versions of the video, $2.6 million. Now, Cindy and I have been traveling for seven, eight years making videos from the Caribbean across the United States and Canada. We haven't seen that kind of money at all. But that's not the point. Here's the thing think about this $2.6 million for that video. How much does it cost to make a one-hour television action adventure program? Or, I have seen Hollywood movies made for less than 2.6 million bucks. That's serious money. Now, I have written back and tried to get an accounting of how the money was allocated, which I haven't heard yet. But anyway, the Wild Within British Columbia video has 307,032 views in five months on YouTube. And the British Columbia channel, Destination British Columbia, 
has more than 6,000 subscribers and 1,991,000 plus views on YouTube. Holy smokes, now that is getting great return on investment, isn't it? Well, it might be if you realized or didn't know that, well, like people like us, Cindy and myself, who make travel-oriented videos, real videos, we travel, we can't document what we're seeing, what we're finding, we have more than 170 million views. More than 170 million views. More than 40,000 subscribers. Because we do something that marketing companies do not understand. We keep it real. It's all about real experiences. And when somebody, whether it's in Germany or Italy or in Japan, whatever, wants to see about a destination, about an experience, they want to see real stuff. They don't want to hear about propaganda, commercials, advertising, marketing, you know, getting the perfect thing. They want to see real people doing real things. That is what social media was about. Even though marketing companies are trying to direct it into the direction of uh, becoming a marketing tool. It's a marketing tool. I mean, I tell you, we're going to make this video. We're going to plaster it out there. You're going to send it to all the travel companies, travel agents. They're going to have a big tool to use. But when somebody's at home in the evening dreaming about getting away, they're not looking to find British Columbia's tourism industry. They want to find real things. And like I said, I can tell you that our videos, we, we don't classify them in the sense of, you know, destination British Columbia. We have different parts of British Columbia, different things, everything from uh, uh, events like demolition derbies, horse racing, uh, polo matches, dragon boat racing, beaches, whatever, going down to uh, uh, our agricultural areas and, and fruit stands and what all the things that combine to make British Columbia. Our videos about British Columbia combined have well over 10 million views, but they're not classified in the typical tourism sense. And the reason I'm talking about it is because I am pissed off that people are getting taken advantage of. Look at Albertans. Right now, they've had their price of fuel jacked up. They've had more taxes on, you know, sin taxes, alcohol, tobacco, um, tax on education, tax on everything is, you know, everything is going up steady. And these creepy politicians try to make it seem like they know what they're doing and the marketing companies who are much better at selling themselves than selling an idea have them under their control i mean i remember going in Kelowna one time and it wasn't a Kelowna tourism it was a different tourism agency but i went to them and the older people working in the office well, YouTube, you know, it's kind of way out there, but they have their own people, and, you know, they get helicopter shots. Holy smokes, they get helicopter shots. Now, that alone is worth spending tens and tens of thousands of dollars because you got a helicopter shot. And I can imagine when the marketers come in and they start their spiel. You know, they have their uh, PowerPoint presentations and all this sort of stuff, and they're selling themselves. They're selling their idea. They should have the same ability to sell their product out there. Return on investment. 300-some thousand views for a 2.6 million dollar production in my opinion sucks big time just like it sucks that Allison Redford would spend over five hundred thousand dollars to go to the Olympics with 29 people in her entourage I don't give a rat's ass about how they try to justify it that is a waste of money and all these wastes in Alberta all the waste in British Columbia all the waste across Canada in the United States I mean in the United United States, holy smokes, you've seen it, they got congressmen who are Instagramming their own pictures uh, about going, you know, water skiing or all these adventures, taking their people, well, they've, he resigned, but you get the idea, corruption is so rampant that many of the politicians, when they're elected or when they get into office, they think of themselves as royalty, I mean, Alison Redford, her, you know, her final, uh, stick that broke the camel's back was wanting to build a condo condominium a penthouse a penthouse at taxpayers expense government of alberta had three jet uh, not jets but had three uh airplanes 
Think about it. This isn't the government of Alberta. It's the taxpayers paying for it because the damn corporations, I don't care if they're oil, gas, whatever, they're not putting up uh, the money. They, every excuse is found in the book why corporations shouldn't pay, but they get the benefits. They get everything. I mean, they get kickbacks and all sorts of, you know, uh, refunds and stuff like that, but they don't pay their fair share. And this is why I get really ticked off about politics, about the spending that goes on, and other ways. Because I tell you, I mean, I've worked in industries. I've seen people working overtime, hard overtime. And the more they work, the more taxes they had to pay because they get into a higher tax bracket. This is from experience. And the government, when they say they're spending money, they're not spending their money. They're yanking it out of people's pocket and allocating it. It's not any of their money. I mean, somebody should give them a little conk on the side of the head and say, hey, wake up wake up it's not the government's money it's not your money you're wasting look if the bc government had taken a couple of hundred thousand bucks and went to high schools you know in high school kids are already learning about video production stuff like this and made a contest you know with maybe two two and a half thousand dollar prizes out there i mean look at all the prizes they could have had a hundred or so prizes out there uh for students for their education for whatever purposes they wanted and have them make videos. And we got young people creating original music. They're excellent. You can find all this stuff. It's not about copyright and that kind of BS. They can tell that to people that don't know any better. But if you're into production, you know how you can cut costs. And talk about cutting costs. We got the federal government. Stephen Harper has a 24-7 uh, YouTube channel. They got videos up in the government of Canada, Stephen Harper. It requires up to four staffers to produce. Four staffers. Once again, I can tell you that you could have students create better videos quicker with more interest than what staffers do. And these staffers, I mean, okay, the Government of Canada's uh, YouTube channel has 940,000 overall views, 3,307 subscribers, which think about it, all the uh, other uh, conservatives out there, you can only get 3,000 subscribers. And... The PMO says that on an average, three staffers in the Privy Council office work on publishing the videos. Now, three staffers to create the videos. Again, I know about video production. And these may include EX01 director, special projects, a GT404, senior multimedia media monitoring analyst, and project coordinator. Analysts. I mean, think about the titles these people have. How much would they be paid to create the prime minister's propaganda messages? And then, that apparently does not include the number of taxpayer-paid staff in the PMO's office who may record the videos and edit them. What the hell? What does it take to create these videos? Again, you can tell people that are not experienced in this, oh, it takes a lot of staff, and it takes all of this and all of that, and you need all this equipment, and oh, man, the costs are mounting. You know, the yearly budget has to be a bunch of BS. A bunch of BS. And we have filmed the Prime Minister. We filmed Tom uh, Mulcair, Justin Trudeau. We, it's not rocket science. Today's equipment is awesome. Editing software is awesome. Kids are so excellent at it. I mean, today if you buy a smartphone, it's got editing things inside it. You can shoot 4,000 lines of rev resolution, ultra high definition video, and edit your videos in your smartphone for Pete's sakes. It's absolutely ludicrous, but they waste money because it's not their own. And that has me ticked off because as people are getting older, we're facing cutbacks on health care, on pensions, on so many different things. Young people are facing education. Families have to have both parents working because cost of living is so high. Housing costs, food, everything keeps mounting. And the government just keeps wasting. Like, like I said, it's really got me ticked off. And I will do everything to keep putting my voice out there. Even if I sound like I'm on a rant, I don't give a rat. Maybe I am on a rant. 
but that's what it takes. I love seeing people around the world, whether it's in Europe or in South America, in Brazil, whatever, take to the streets and protest and demonstrate. It's one of the things that I really find unreal is that so many people in Canada can complain in private. But in public, they wouldn't say crap if their mouth was full of it. It's like, you know, we're too polite for that. So we're going to bend over and take it? Come on, get with the program, people. We have a duty to ourselves and to the next generation to make Canada better and to make these politicians accountable for every single penny that they spend because it's not their money. It's your money. It's my money, and it's the next generation's money. And that's why I get ticked off. You can see our videos on YouTube. Well over 170 million total views were viewed by people around the world. Number one is the United States. Number two is Canada. We didn't get here by accident. We There's a reason and how we do our videos. And uh, thank you for watching. And if you care, thank you for caring. We need more people like that. Please, that's the way I see it.